Ms. Kia Abbey, the former president of ASMSU. She is going to read Howl by Adam Ginsburg. Thank you. Um, so I read Howl last year for those of you who are here. <coughs> you're sorry, you can hear it again. Um, and it's interesting because last year the reason I chose Howell, um, I think in part was because I still connected with it. And last year I told a story of undiagnosed mental illness, homesickness, um, a feeling of uh, disenfranchisement, um, and I guess a feeling of weakness, not being able to do anything about the society I was living in, um, and not feeling empowered to do anything about the things I was seeing in my society. Um, and I feel like today, as I read this, after serving a year as student body president and now having an incredible job as a field organizer for Forward Montana, I finally feel like somebody who is empowered to make the world a better place. So, um, again. I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness, starving, hysterical, naked. Dragging themselves through the Negro streets at dawn, looking for an angry fix. Angel-headed hipsters burning for the ancient, heavenly connection to the starry dynamo in the machinery of night. Who poverty and tatters and hollow-eyed and high sat up smoking in the supernatural darkness <coughs> of cold water flats floating across the tops of cities contemplating jazz. Who barred their hands to heaven under the L and saw Mohammedan angels staggering on tenement roofs illuminated. Who passed through universities with radiant cool eyes, hallucinating Arkansas and Blake Light tragedy among the scholars of war. Who were expelled from the academic ac academy for crazy and publishing obscene odes on the windows of the skull. Who cowered in unshaven rooms in underwear, burning their money in wastebaskets and listening to the terror through the wall, who got busted in their public beers returning through Laredo with a belt of marijuana for New York, who ate fire in paint hotels or drank turpentine in Paradise Valley, death or purgatory their torsos night after night, with dreams, with drugs, with waking nightmares, alcohol and cock and endless balls, incomparable blind streets of shuddering cloud and lightning in the mind leaping toward poles of Canada and Patterson, illuminating all the motionless world of time between. Peyote, solides of halls, backyard green tree cemetery dawns, wine drunkenness over the rooftop, storefront burrows of tea head, joyride, neon, blinking traffic light, sun and moon and tree vibrations, in the roaring winter dusks of Brooklyn, Ashcan rantings, and kind king light of mind who chain themselves to subways for the endless ride from Battery to Holy Bronx on Benzedrine until the noise of wheels and children brought them down shuddering, mouth wrapped and battered leak of brain, all drained of brilliance in the drear light of zoo, who sank all night in summering light of Bickford's floated out and sat through the stale beer afternoon in desolate bodies, listening to the crack of doom on a hydrogen jukebox who talked continuously, 70 hours from park to pad to bar to Bellevue to museum to the Brooklyn Bridge. A lost battalion of platonic conversationalists jumping down the stoops of fire escapes, off windowsills, off Empire State, out of the moon. Yakety yakety, screaming, vomiting, whispering facts and memories and anecdotes and eyeball kicks and shocks of hospitals and jails and wars. Whole intellects disgorged in total recall for seven days and nights with brilliant eyes meet for the synagogue cast on the pavement, who vanished into nowhere, New Jer Zen, New Jersey, leaving a trail of ambiguous picture postcards of Atlantic City Hall, suffering eastern sweats and tangerine bone grindings and migraines of China under junk withdrawal in New York's bleak furnished rooms, who wandered around and around at midnight in the rail yard, wondering where to go and went, leaving no broken hearts, who lit cigarettes in boxcars, 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 racketing through snow toward lonesome farms in Grandfather Night. Who studied Plutonius Poe, St. John of the Cross, telepathy, and Bob Kabbalah because the cosmos is instinctively vibrated at their feet in Kansas. Who loaned it through the streets of Idaho, seeking visionary Indian angels who were visionary Indian angels. Who thought they were only mad when Baltimore gleamed in supernatural ecstasy. 
who jumped in lim limousines with the cinnamon of Oklahoma on the impulsive winter midnight streetlight small town rain, who lounged hungry and lonesome through Houston seeking sex or jazz or soup and followed the brilliant Spaniard to converse about America and eternity, a hopeless task, and so took ship to Africa who disappeared into the volcanoes of Mexico, leaving behind nothing but the shadow of dungarees and the lava and ash of poetry scattered in fireplace Chicago, who reappeared on the West Coast investigating the FBI in beards and shorts with big pacifist eyes sexy in their dark skin, passing out incomprehensible leaflets, who burned cigarette holes in their arms, protesting the narcotic de facto haze of capitalism, who distributed super communist pamphlets in Union Square weeping and undressing while the sirens of Los Alamos wailed them down and wailed down wall and the state of Staten Island Ferry also wailed, who broke down crying in white gymnasiums naked and trembling before the machinery of other skeletons, who bit detectives in the neck and shrieked with delight in police cars for committing no crime but their own wild cooking catastrophe and intoxication who howled on their knees in the subway and were dragged off the roof waving genitals and manuscripts, who let themselves be fucked in the ass by saintly motorcyclists and screamed with joy, who blew and were blown by the human cerebrum and the sailors' caresses of Atlantic and Caribbean love, who bawled in the morning and the evenings in rose gardens and the grass of public parks and cemeteries, scattering freely to whomever found the name, who hiccuped endlessly trying to giggle but wound up with a sob behind a partition in a Turkish bath, when the blonde and naked angel came to pierce them with a sword, who lost their love voice to the three-old shrews of fate, and the one-eyed shrew of the heterosexual dollar, and the one-eyed shrew that winks out of the womb, and the one-eyed shrew that does nothing but sit on her ass and sniff the intellectual golden threads of the Craftsman saloon, who copulated static and insatiated with a bottle of beer, a sweetheart, a package of cigarettes, a candle, and fell off the bed and continued along the and down the hall, and it is fainting on the wall with a vision of an ultimate cunt, and then come eluding the last rhythm of consciousness, who sweetened the snatches of a million girls trembling in the sunset and were red eyed in the morning, but prepared to sweeten the snatch of the sunrise, flashing buttocks under barns and naked in the lake, who went out pouring to Colorado and mirrored stolen night cars, and see secret hero of these poems, Coxman and Adonis of Denver, joy to the memory of his innumerable lays. <clears throat> of girls in empty lots and diner backyard movie houses, who dreamt and made incarnate gaps in time and space through images juxtaposed and trapped, the archangel of the soul between two visual images, and joined the elemental verbs and set the noun and dash of consciousness together, jumping with sensation of patter, omnipotence, alternative duty, to recreate the syntax and measure of poor human prose and stand before you speechless and intelligent and shaking with shame. Rejected yet confessing out the soul to conform to the rhythm of thought in his naked and endless head. The madman bum and angel beaten time, unknown yet putting down here what might be left to say, in time come after death. And rose incarnate in the ghostly clothes of jazz, in the gold horn shadow of the band, blew the suffering of America's naked mind for love into an illa illa lama lama sabachthana saxophone that shivered the city sound to the last radio. With the absolute heart of the poem of life, butchered out of their own bodies, good to eat a thousand years.